Hi, I'm Tracy Spicer. And today, we'd like to dig a little bit deeper into those changes announced in the federal budget around superannuation. For that, we're delighted to be joined by Professor of Finance at the University of Sydney, Susan Thorpe. Hi, Susan. Hi, Tracy. Do the changes announced in the budget in relation to super really address the structural flaws? A lot of the changes that are announced in the budget have been on the table for some time, uh, being, uh, being raised by some of the previous inquiries, actually going right back to, to 2014, um, the financial system inquiry then, and then through to the Productivity Commission's review of the super system, and more recently, the, the, um, the Hain Royal Commission. So taking a lot of recommendations from those reviews of the super system, some of the changes that the government's brought in through this current budget have really been directed at, at continuing the implication of some of those uh, recommendations. Probably the biggest and to my mind most important structural change that they've announced recently is the changes to the way that um, default accounts are being allocated to people when they start new jobs. So as you know, in the past, uh, employers chose to fault my super accounts for their employees. So a new employee that starts a new job, if they didn't choose a super fund for themselves, would be allocated to the default fund chosen by their employer. And the big difference brought in by the current budget is that that will no longer be the case. If you start a new job, your employer will go to the tax office and check to see if you already have a superannuation account. And, uh, and unless you tell them otherwise, uh, you will be um, having your uh, superannuation contributions from your new employer paid into that old account. The Hain Royal Commission used the, uh, I think, unfortunate metaphor of talking about default accounts being stapled to people. Uh, which none of us really wants to think about, but um, uh, perhaps a better terminology is to talk about our accounts following us as we move from job to job. So we'll, we will have less of a problem with people accumulating multiple superannuation accounts, which is really inefficient from lots of points of view. Yes, I was worried about the stapling terminology as well. Yeah. It sounded painful. With regards to the benchmarking tools and the comparison tools, mm. how much will that help workers? This was something that was, um, again, raised in the Productivity Commission review and they, they were saying, how can we better protect people from being stuck in a fund that's not done well for a long period of time and it's really going to cost them over the course of their life? Uh, there have been a series of different ideas put forward. The one that the Treasurer has settled on here is, uh, has two parts, really. The first part is to establish a comparison tool, which they've labelled Your Super, and which is going to be hosted by the Australian Tax Office again. So a site that people can go to that gives information about the comparative performance of different superannuation funds. And, and I think the long-term intention is that um, like a lot of comparison sites, not only will it um, show you information about the different funds, but I think eventually it will allow you to switch in from one fund to another. Uh, uh, what's in the budget at the moment suggests that people will be able to see their own accounts and consolidate accounts, but the implication of some of the other things that have been said is that eventually you'll be able to choose a fund through that portal as well. At the moment, there's no publicly available space that you can go to um, sponsored by the government that would make comparisons between different MySuper products. There are lots of commercial providers who provide this information really helpfully and a lot of people use those commercial comparison sites. But this is the first time that the um, government has said that they will make a place where people can make comparisons between um, uh, my super options to start with and then I suspect later between other options as well. So this is really new um, and this is um, quite uh, radical in the sense that this direct comparison is being offered by the government and that it's being offered on the basis of a set of metrics that the government is choosing. I'd love to find out what other changes you'd like to see the federal government implementing in the future when it comes to superannuation. I'd like to see these ones work. 
before they do much more. So one of the things about these um, changes that have been brought in, the default, the default account one is interesting. There are lots of um, aspects to that. Uh, one of the obvious ones is that if, if the account that follows us is our first superannuation account, will that mean that the types of funds and superannuation offerings that people take when they first enter the workforce, and if I think back to my first job, it was waitressing, um, when I look at my own children, it might have been working as a tutor or um, for, for a fast food outlet. Uh, that's the first place that a lot of people will accumulate their first superannuation account. Does that mean that, that um, those types of funds are likely to attract the majority of default super fund members? Or does it mean that the super funds will spend a lot of time promoting themselves to employers of young people or to young people themselves. I think, I think things that move the super funds to try to engage young people more will be a good thing, but that's a very difficult task. Most people don't get that interested in their super until there's a sort of substantial amount of money there. So that will be a challenge in itself. Um, so in, in terms of the default setting, there's one thing. In terms of the comparison tools, that's a, that's a very interesting space. Um, so one thing we know about um, people's um, approach to super is that many people find it intimidating and confusing. So a challenge for the um, tax office will be to make a comparison site that people find uh, easy to understand, transparent, usable, user-friendly, and they haven't got long to do it. So this, this site has to be up and running in a relatively short period of time, which makes me wonder about the process around testing it. Will they be able to test it thoroughly and see not only whether people like it or not, but how they use it, what decisions they make when they're using it. So, um, so in terms of structural change, um, I think there's a lot to recommend what, what the government's proposing, but, but let's see how it goes. Let's see what happens next. And, and we have a history in this country of even though we have access to a lot of quite useful information about superannuation and many providers who are very interested in helping their members, um, we as members ourselves are not always very interested um, or active in our approach to our super, uh, which is completely understandable. It's not front of mind for most of us most of the time. Uh, so uh, let's, let's get this part of it working and then see how it goes. Yeah, time will tell. It'll be interesting to see yes. what happens in a generation. Susan Thorpe, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Tracy.